And hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chris Shankel greeting you, thanking you for joining us on another championship bowling as we speak to you from the Brunswick Alleys in Paramus, New Jersey. And this week, coming back for the third consecutive week, is a New Jerseyite. He is a popular local favorite, is known from coast to coast. Here he is, Lou Campy. Lou? Hi. Gee, you brought the uh, whole town of Dumont, New Jersey well, along here this week, didn't quite you? Quite a few. <laughs> well, I don't know uh, what's going to happen when the uh, fans split themselves up in rooting for the bowlers because your opponent this week is a fellow that, as you know, and as many bowling fans know, has won two all-star titles, is in Bowling's Hall of Fame. He, too, hails from New Jersey, Fairlawn, to be exact. So how about welcoming Junie McMahon? Junie? Hi. Next to the back. Have you two fellows ever bowled against each other before? Yeah. Uh, a few times. You have? Surely. Yeah. We won't ask the results because uh, here on this week's show we expect some nifty ones and I know that's going to happen. Well, we're going to try hard. I know. <laughs> well, Lou, you were on in the last few weeks. Junie, I'd like to review with you and with the fans at home just how our show works. If you win the first game, you get $50. If you win the second, it's $75. Win the third game and it's worth $100. Now, if you win the match in total pens, you get $500. If you lose, 200. And if you roll a perfect 300 game, $5,000. <laughs> both roll 300 in the same game? What is that? If you both roll 300 in the same game, 5000 to each bowler. That's it. We want to get that straight, Chris, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sure there are no further questions regarding the perfect game, but I have one question I'd like to ask you after I tell you that championship bowling is conducted under ABC and All-Star rules. Who won the toss? Uh, I, I did. What are you going to do? I start on three. You start on three? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. And uh, first of all, let's have a handshake here and come on bowling. Lou Campy and Junie McMahon. Now here is Lou Campy appearing on Championship Bowling for the third consecutive week. Last week he uh, downed Joe Willman of Berwyn, Illinois. He is now shooting first on Alley Free. Oh, and he slides past that 1-3 pocket, leaving the 2-4 and the 5. From time to time, we uh, often remind you that in watching the stars on Championship Bowling, you have an excellent opportunity to watch their uh, various characteristics and perhaps use some of theirs in your own game. Well, here is a fellow who uh, has the unorthodox approach of ending on his right foot. Watch him. But among the champion bowlers, regardless of how they end, you'll notice that their control and consistency is sometimes baffling. It is Lou Campy in with a spare in the first frame. Here now is Junie McMahon, the great bowler from Fairlawn, New Jersey. 43 years old, 5'11", 195 pounds. He's on four. Hey! Well, uh, Junie, uh, in talking about that perfect 500 game, uh, was talking for more than himself because he was questioning about the... Um, possibility if both bowlers rolled a perfect 300 game in this three game match. Well, he's got one of the 12 that's necessary. They have to be strung together, as you know. Now on alley three. Hey! See that, Junie? Uh, this week is rolling a ball that looks as though it's chewing up the pins. Boy. He's a fellow that uh, throws a hook-curve combination and gets a lot of mixing. Now it's Campy, who has marked in the first frame with a spare. In order to keep things on an even keel, he'll have to strike here on four. And that he does. Lou Campy with a strike in the second frame, giving him 20 pins through the first. Lou is the father of three is a mason contractor, has been doing masonry work longer than he has been bowling. Here he is now, 
And they get a double on three. Yes. Another real mixer by Lou Campy. Lou Campy just put together a double, and after two frames, he is down one mark by virtue of Junie's two strikes in a row. Now it's Junie of Fairlawn, who started in 1929 as a bowler, who is shooting on four. Hey, he has put three together. He's put three together. A turkey for Junie McMahon, who won two All-Star titles, one in 1949 and another in 1951. He was the national match game champion two years, ABC singles and all events titleist in 1947. Has a two-year record average of 207 in the ABC. He now is on alley three, shooting for the fourth consecutive strike. He came up high on the head pin, but he broke up that split, and he's left with the six and the ten. You'll notice from time to time that Juni will pick up the towel, which is sort of a trademark with these bowlers, and even without using it, will slam it on the bench. He's not mad. It's just one of the uh, characteristics or habits that the bowler has picked up throughout their long careers. McMahon going for six and ten. He has it. <laughs> and it's a spare for McMahon in the fourth frame, giving him a total of 78 pins through the third. Now let's see what Luke Campy can do as he has a double working for him. He is on four. Lou Campy. He, uh, he has put three together now here on championship bowling. Three consecutive strikes, which gives Lou 50 pins through the second. He has a double working for him in a string of three. First game worth $50 to the winner. The second game, 75. The third, 100. The match, 500. To the loser goes $200. Here is Campy, who takes four steps from about 15 feet away. A low hit, leaving the 2-5 and the 8. 2-5 and the 8. So, in the third frame, it is Campy with 77 pins. And Campy now is looking at the 2-5 and the 8. And it is a much tougher spare than it looks. Will he convert it? Ooh, he came across the foul line. He fouled, sticking at the line. He stuck there at the line, and his momentum carried him across. Well, there is a tough break for Lou Campy, as you saw Junie McMahon going up to check the foul line on alley four. Here now is McMahon who is on four. <laughs> Junie in with a strike in the fifth frame, giving him a total through four frames of 98 pins. He is working on a strike in the fifth. He is now shooting here in the sixth on alley three. Junie uses a full 16-foot approach. the seven and the ten. And that is not a pleasant one to face. Two weeks ago, here on Championship Bowling, it was Campy who converted a six, seven, and a ten. Also a five, seven. Let's see how Junie will play it, if he plays it safe or if he goes all the way. Oh, he goes for the two pins on the left side giving him an open frame in the sixth. And as Lou Campy comes up with a foul on his second shot in the fifth frame, it cost him 16 pins. He has a total of 101. McMahon has a total of 126. Any number of weeks here on Championship Bowling, you've seen fellows really come back, being down pins to go on and win. Here is Lou Campy now following a foul, a shooting on four. <laughs> Yeah. 
And you uh, get a bad break. Uh, one time you come back with a good break occasionally, as uh, you experts bowlers know, and perhaps novice bowlers do not know, when a foul is committed on the particular shot. It's just the same as throwing the ball in the gutter. In other words, whether you're shooting at one or ten pins, it does not count regardless of the number you have carried. Campy now on three. Mm. Almost with a dinner bucket, but the end dropped out, leaving the two, four, and the five. Can the sixth, the 101 through the fifth. He is a fellow that uh, is appearing now for his third week. First in defeating Steve Nagy two weeks ago. Last week, Joe Wilman. Two, four, five, taken out by Lou Campy with a spare in the seventh. He has 121 pins after six frames. It is an even game. So we came across the Brooklyn side and left the six and the ten. Here is a fellow that Naturally, in this, such an individual sport is his own boss, but the same is true of another occupation, that of a, a bowling supply man, as Junie now uses a five-hole ball. And he gets his spare in the seventh, still keeping things even in the mark department. But five pins, as we said earlier, is, is the uh, slightest of margin. These are two fellows from New Jersey who are great champions hailing from the East. And Juni strikes in the eighth frame, giving him a total of 146 through the seventh. 146 through the seventh. Now it is Campy, who has a spare in the seventh. He'll be looking to uh, set one in that 1-3 pocket for a strike. Bacci bowler from Verona, Italy, who's been bowling since 1938. His first year league average was 187. The very first night that he went out to bowl, he rolled a 178. Here he is on championship bowling on three. Oh, hi. Well, a split was broken up for Lou. The seven pin was toppled, leaving the six and the ten. Breaking up a difficult spare, difficult split, is a uh, real windfall for a championship bowler because the difficult problem it is to cover them. They don't like open frames. So there is uh, Lou Campy's spare in the ninth frame, giving him 161 through the eighth. Now it is Junie McMahon with a strike in the eighth. A double here would would fatten the pin lead. This has been a real close first game. Got it. Junie McMahon has a strike in the foundation frame, giving him a one mark lead, a one mark lead or approximately 10 pins. And now, if he can roll three more, he will shoot a 236 while Campy's best. If he could strike the rest of the way, would be 211. Ooh, and the 5-7 stands, the 5-7. So now, with that split facing Junie McMahon, if he can cover it and then strike with his next ball, he will shoot a 214. So believe you me, this game could be a mighty, mighty close one. Watch closely, friends. Here is a 5-7 split. A 5-7 split. Junie McMahon of Fairlawn, New Jersey. Hmm. Trying to slip it over, but it gives Junie McMahon a total of 
202 as he has just completed the first game a 202 now let's see Junie is plus one now watch Campy who if he strikes all the way Campy could shoot a 211 and win the first game Willie <laughs> a strike in the tenth frame giving him two more shots. Campy must get another strike to win the game. And of course if he's going to get a strike it's got to be on this ball. Will he get it? He's got it. He's got it. He can shoot a 211 if he throws one more perfect ball and then he will go up in the match leading by nine pins Campy now with his 15 foot approach is on four let's watch well he gets all but three of them and it closes the gap even closer giving Luke Campy a 208 in the first game as he wins it by six pins as Junie McMahon rolled a 202. Now we'll be back with the presentation and the second game right after this brief but important message. With Old Milwaukee beer, 11 is important too. 11 words tell you what Old Milwaukee is. And here they are, count them. Have one, have another. It's that kind of beer, Old Milwaukee. Now, what do those 11 words say? Well. We believe they say clearly Old Milwaukee has drinkability. Drinkability, that quality that lets you come back for more. <laughs> well, see what I mean? People who like a really light beer always come back for more Old Milwaukee. It's that kind of beer. Old Milwaukee is rewarding with a superb lightness all its own. And that's what gives Old Milwaukee drinkability. But why not discover this for yourself? Discover what drinkability really means. Next time you see this sign, signal the friendly bartender and order up an Old Milwaukee. Have one, have another. It's that kind of beer, Old Milwaukee. Injector shavers, don't you wish you could fit your razor with a Persona stainless, the blade that's given many men more shaves than <laughs> gorgeous <laughs> blades? Now you can with Persona stainless injector made by Persona's exclusive British process to give you more luxury shaves or we'll buy you <laughs> or any injector blade you name. When you're feeling tired and thirsty, here's a bright idea. Schaefer beer rings the bell with the full flavored brew. That's light and dry too. Make it clear. Make it Schaefer. Let it ring the bell with you. Make it clear. Make it Schaefer. The full flavored brew. That's light and dry too. And when champions meet on championship bowling, Close scores are bound to happen, and that's the case here, Lou Campy, as you won the first game by six pens, 208 to 202. Yeah, they're pretty close. By the way, there was some great clutch bowling on yeah. your part. Yes, well, I had a double too. That's double right. Two. Well, here is some uh, moolah that will help. $50 right. for winning the first game, Lou. Okay. And Junie McMahon is, is really ready to go. I'm How about you? the second one. Very okay, <laughs> here we go with the second game. Six pins separate Junie McMahon and Lou Campy as we are now ready to roll in the second game of this three game match. McMahon on three. Uh, solid hit in that one three pocket for Junie McMahon. It's a strike for Junie. Now here is Lewis Campy. 50 years old, 5'6", weighs 160 pounds. And he is a perfect example of brute strength is not necessary to bowl. Oh, the 5 and the 9 are left on a high hit 5 and 9 pin stand. Here is a fellow that had the high series in the nation in 1949 with an 806 
He rolled a perfect game in the 1955 All-Star. In his bowling career, he has rolled 14 other perfect games. Ooh. It's a spare for Lou Campy in the first as Junie McMahon started off on alley three with a strike. Wrong foot Lou, who has been all over the country, rolled in exhibition matches, a great competitor in match games. And here is a battle of an orthodox grips. Ooh, one that can be called a tap, and it was the 10 pin that would not go over. Lou Campy with his four hole ball, actually he has two thumb holes, since he uses only one at a time, he uses a rubber insert so that his middle finger will fit in as snug as he'd like for it to. Here he is, across alley on the 10. He gets it. Lou Campy with a spare in the second, giving him 19 pence to the first. Here is James Juni McMahon of Fairlawn, New Jersey, who has a strike in the first. As we mentioned, a battle of grips. Here's a fellow that is shooting a five-hole ball. Semi-fingertip. And there are two in a row for Juni McMahon. He started off that first game stringing them together. And now by virtue of his two in a row, he has gone up one mark after two frames in this second game, which is worth $75 to the winner. Junie McMahon now on three. And Junie once again has put three together for a turkey in the first three frames. Look at him. Strikes all the way. Here now is Lou Campy, who has two spares, and he'll have to do some pressure shooting here in order to stay with McMahon. Campy on four. Hmm. There he is left with the 310 baby split as he gets a nose hit. I suggest that all of you get out at your first opportunity to see what it's like to hit that head pin on the nose and be left with a 310 baby split. Bowling is a game for the entire family thanks to the women who have made it so. So take all the family out and try it. Will he get it? Nope, he failed to convert on the 310. So Campy now has 46 pins through the third. And because of the open frame now, goes down three marks or approximately 30 pins. Campy up on three. So Campy begins anew. And it is Junie McMahon's hope that he can continue what he did in the first, second, and third frames. Here is McMahon on four. Will it be in? left with a 5-7 split. 5-7 split. And there it just goes to prove that with all the variables in this game, just one little thing, being offline, having not the proper speed on your ball, not the proper hook, and everything can blow sky high. Here's Junie on the 5-7. Well, he gets the five and it gives him a total of 86 pins through the fourth, 86. And of course it is an open frame. It is not an error, an open frame. Junie now through four frames is up 20 pins or two marks. Will he start anew on three? Certainly did, sweeping the 10 away with that strike in the fifth. Now here is Lou Campy, who has a strike going for him in the fourth, and who is here on championship bowling for the third consecutive week. 
So he has earned a good share of money, and he's looking to earn more. Already has $50 this week. Ooh, that one really bulldozed past the 1-3 pocket. So it is the 2-4 and the 5 that he must topple in order to continue marking. Both bowlers have had open frames. In this, the second game, Campy in the third and McMahon in the fourth. Campy now going for the 2-4-5. Has it. Campy in the three weeks that we have had the pleasure of watching him has proven that he is a control consistent bowler. He has been tough on the spare leaves. He's really converted some difficult ones and he has gotten in most cases those that to the star bowler appear to be quite easy. They're easily missed at times too. Oh, again. He slides by the pocket leaving this time the four and the eight as Juni now goes up 22 pins here in this second game. 22 pins. You recall that Campy led by six going in to the second game after winning the first 208 to 202. So let's see what the builder of chimneys and fireplaces, see what he can do. Four, eight. Good picking them off. There is Campy with the spare in the sixth, giving him 84 pins through the fifth. Here now is Junie McMahon with 86 through the fourth, a strike up in the fifth. pin would not break up the six seven tens rail or split so Junie's got to face it bear up or buck up as you'd say here is the six seven and the ten Junie is pretty much inside Ooh, that ball that ball skidded that skidded a tremendous amount of speed on it and you saw the result and by virtue of that ball going into the gutter he has just thrown away four pins four pins six pins separated the two boys going into this uh, second game and Campy has been in some tight ones the past two weeks this could be another week of it the man on three a real mixer for Junie McMahon, giving him a strike in the seventh with 110 total through the sixth. For Lou Camp, he has 84 through the fifth with a spare up in the sixth. Six pins separating these two bowlers after six frames. Campy on four. Ooh, a power strike for Lou Camp in the seventh. Giving him a total of 104 pins through the sixth. 104 through the sixth. This has been a real close one. The first game was won by six pins. Campy on three. He has put together a double, and now the pressure begins to mount. The pressure really goes sky high now as Juni McMahon Rolling in the eighth frame, is working on a strike in the seventh. Can he double up? Can he double? McMahon is on four. Oh, slid by that pocket, leaving. Well, there's one behind in the dark, the eight pin. The one, two, and the eight are standing. One, two, and eight. Let's see how Junie will play this. This is not an easy one to pick up. This is not easy. He gets him. One, two, and eight. Cleared by Junie McMahon, giving him a spare in the eighth frame. And it is Campy now, who had the double to Junie's strike and a spare. Campy goes up four pins. 
This is really close, imagine. After 18 frames, they are nip and tuck. And Juni uh, comes in with a good foundation in the ninth. Good foundation in the ninth. As Juni McMahon now has 150 pens through the eighth. McMahon's best possible if he can put together three more strikes would be a 210. Campy's best if he can strike the rest of the ray as he is working on a double now would be a 224. Campy won the first game 208 to 202. Here he is on four. He has the turkey three in a row. So Campy with the turkey now he'll be shooting in that tenth and final frame. It is a 14 pin lead now held by Campy. Campy is now over on alley three. He is up to the first row of dots on the approach. His heels are on it. He's a bit to the left of the center dot. The dinner bucket on the left side is left by Campy as his balls roll by. So it is 160 pins for Campy through the eighth. A strike up in the ninth. For McMahon, 150 through the eighth with a strike in the ninth. Ten pins separating these bowlers. Ten pins. The game that was an offshoot of a nine-pin game. That's the way to cover the dinner bucket. Shown you by Lou Campy as he has a spare in the tenth, giving him another shot. And his best possible would be a 200 if he can roll a strike. A 200, even. McMahon's best, if Juni could put together three strikes, would be a 210. This has really been close through the third frame. It was uh, McMahon who jumped ahead, but then he had an open. A real spiller, and it is a 200 on the button for Lou Campy here in the second game, the second game of three. Juni must double in the tenth to win. He must double in the tenth. In other words, he has a strike working for him in the ninth. He needs one right here. Watch it closely. Here it goes on four. Wow. Ball came up a little bit too high, and he is left with the four, seven, ten. Four, seven, ten. Now, Juni's best would be a 190 if he can cover this split and then strike. And then it would make a 16 pin difference after two games. Juni now. Going down. Ooh, it came awfully close at converting that spare. And for Juni McMahon, he has a total of 178 in this the second game. McMahon with 178, Luke Campy with a 200, Campy winning over Junie McMahon. Now we'll be back with the presentation after we first listen and look at this brief announcement. TV, top value. TV, top value. For a real buy in a used car, see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. He's having a special anniversary sale, celebrating the anniversary of top value used cars. Let's take a look at some of these great DeSoto used cars in action. A DeSoto Plymouth dealer specializes in cars that were better engineered and better built. That's why they're better used cars. This 1952 DeSoto, for instance, the extra value that was originally built into it is still there. Remember how we described the 1952 DeSoto as a beautiful car and built for comfort? Those famous Oroflow shock absorbers smoothed out the bumpiest roads. They still do. And waterproof ignition helps you start your DeSoto on the rainiest days and keeps it operating in the dampest of weather. So great has been the demand for new 1955 DeSotos and Plymouths. Terrific trade-ins like this are now a top value buy. Now is the time to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. He's having a special anniversary sale, celebrating the anniversary of top value used cars.
The Duchess is clipping coupons from a new filter cigarette, Galaxy. Put them in the vault, Jameson. These dividend coupons purchase linens, percolators, pets, hundreds of things. Galaxy has charcoal granules surrounded with flavor in the blend from pedigree tobacco at the end on your side of the filter. Jameson! Yes, madam? I found four more in the carton. Start collecting dividend coupons with new Galaxy and with Alpine menthol cigarettes, too. It's popular, it's fun for you to do. It's popular like the taste of Fall City Brew. Fall City Beer. Popular pasteurized bitter-free Fall City Beer. Now bowling is a popular game. It's a lot of fun to roll a frame. And another thing that's popular, too, is the bitter-free taste of Fall City Brew. This bitter-free taste gave Fall City its fame. It's always bitter-free and always tastes the same. Wonderful. Fall City's bitter-free taste is here to stay because Fall City beer is pasteurized to keep it that way. So when you're bowling with a friend or two, drink Fall City beer. It's the popular thing to do. Buy Fall City beer. Popular pasteurized bitter-free Fall City beer. And so it was a 22-pen victory for Mr. Lou Campy here. Now he has taken game one and game two and... Because of it, here is your $75 for winning the second, Lou. Thank you. So uh, you're going to be able to build a lot of fireplaces, aren't you? I don't have to uh, if I keep winning this <laughs> like this. <laughs> okay, well, Junie McMahon uh, has something to say about that as the third and final is about to get underway. Here we go. Lou Campy and Junie McMahon. <laughs> now it's Lou Campy of Dumont, New Jersey, just about uh, five miles from where we're speaking here in Paramus, New Jersey, who is up 28 pins after two games. He is shooting on three. And the third and final game is underway, and the dinner bucket is down there for Luke Campy to cover here in the first frame as he is just about ready to shoot his second rope ball. Here is Campy, who rolls a four-hole ball, going against a fellow champion bowler from New Jersey, Junie McMahon, who is rolling a five-hole ball. And there is Campy's spare in the first frame. Here now is Junie, who, because after years upon years of bowling, developed uh, an ailment in his middle finger, so consequently, to get maximum strength in holding the ball, has put four finger holes along with the thumb hole, and he does amazingly well. Watch him on four. There is a strike for Junie McMahon, and the reason, one of the many reasons bowling is enjoyed so universally is the fact that Brute strength is not required. People with physical handicaps have a wonderful opportunity and a chance to participate in uh, one of the most individual of sports. And they leave the alleys with a lot of pleasant memories. Boy, that was a great recovery by Junie McMahon. Junie did a great stick job and a hop at the foul line to avert going over. Well, that uh, happened to uh, Lou Campy, as you know, and it lost him 16 pins. Well, so it goes. Campy now on four, working on a spare. Well, he sent that one home for his strike in the second, giving him 20 pins through the first, the strike up in the second frame. Campy averaged 178 in his first night of bowling, while Junie McMahon averaged 185 for his first three games. Oh, a real nose hit. Full hit on the head pin, and it leaves the three, six, and the 10. 
There aren't too many uh, of the uh, present day champions who can say that they have rolled such amazing averages in their first three games. But what precision, what control, what mastery of the game they have developed over a period of years. Three, six, and ten. Gone. And they spare on the third for Lou Campy giving him 40 pins through the second. And through the second, he is down one mark. Junie McMahon on four. Now, in every game, in all of the three games in this week's match, Junie McMahon has strung three together for a turkey. Who knows, this could be the one where he really puts them together. He'd sure like to. He is down in the match by 28 pins going into the third and final. He is up by about 20 pins in this third and final game. So it is really getting close. Man on three. That four pin was really uh, shaking its head. And it decided to stand, so it's the four and the nine that Juni leaves as a result of a high hit, a high hit in the pocket. So, how would you play it if you were two marks up in the third and final game, but about three marks down in the match? Let's see how Juni shoots. Across the back of the nine pin. It's a gallant bid for a spare there in that split situation, but it is an open for Junie McMahon, giving him 86 pins through the fourth. Now here is Lou Campy. Lou Campy, who can uh, sort of turn the key a little bit here if he can strike in the fourth. Oh, and he is going to have to come up with a fit-in shot on the four and the five. Four and five. Lou Campy now through the third with a total of 58 pins. Juni still leads in the game by eight pins. Campy leads in the match going into this uh, third and final game by 28. So at this point, actually only by 20. There goes Campy on the fit in shot as he got it. Gee. That's twice he has done that here in the three weeks that he's appeared on championship bowling. That's one of those frightening uh, leaves to face. Four and a five. All right, now. Let's see what Lou will do over here on alley three. All right, Lou Campy. It's really making a comeback here in this third and final game after being down uh, over 20 pins. He now has come back to the point where he has applied the pressure on Juni. This game is worth $100. The match is worth $500. Juni is up on four, shooting in the fifth frame after an open fourth. Ooh. There is a forward drop on that four pin, and Juni loved it. Juni loved it, he needed it right here too, to match the strike that Campy has in the fifth frame. McMahon now moves over to alley three. Tension mounts. Again he comes up, and there is a goal post, a bed post. I like to call it an impossible. That certainly covers it as the seven and 10 are down there at the cornermost spots of the 10 pen array. Here is Junie McMahon shooting from the outside, apparently going for the seven pen. Let's watch. And he uh, gets the seven in that impossible split, giving him a total of 114 pins through the sixth. That is his second open here in this third and final game.
is open. Not his second error, just an open frame. Lou Campy now is up on four. And he strikes in the sixth frame, putting together a double, putting together a double further in decreasing the margin held by McMahon. And in fact, after six frames, now it is Lou Campy who has gone up one mark or approximately 10 pins. Lou Campy, who is really twisting the arm now. He's not only evened up the game, but he's gone ahead. Here he is on three. Ooh. He's left with the two, five, and the eight. The two, five, and the eight, giving Campy a total of 105 through the fifth. He is still working on the strike in the sixth, while Junior McMahon has 114 after six frames, and it was an open. Here are the game possibles. Campy could shoot at 235, man at 234. There he picks up that three pin lead, giving Campy a spare in the seventh with 125 pins after six frames. For McMahon, he has 114. Here is McMahon, who has to start practically from scratch. A little bit too hard, and the ball had a lot of speed and failed to come up sliding by and he leaves the one two the four and a sleeper eight yes the one two four and eight is there Ooh, there is a tough break once again for Juni, who has had his share of them here in this three-game match. There is a, another open, two opens in a row, an error in this case, giving him 123 after seven frames for Campy. He now goes up 22 pins in the third and final game, a total of 50 in the match. It just proves our point, which we often make, that open frames can really Ten-pin tap for Junie McMahon on alley three. Ten-pin tap. Junie rolled a 202 in the first game, came back with a 178 for a 380 total, while his opponent Campy had a 208 in the first, 200 on the button in the second for a 408. Junie now over here going for the ten-pin leave. Andy Marks after two open frames with a spare in the eighth. 123 pins after seven frames. Here now is Campy who has 125 after six with a spare in the seventh. On four. Mm. And here's the five seven. A five seven split. Lou Campy. never forget a scoring error which kept him out of the 1954 All-Star Finals in Chicago, Illinois. A fellow who has headquartered here in the East throughout his career. Hey! Well, this fellow is practically doing the impossible. He has uh, picked up a, on a fit-in shot, a four and a five. Now he comes back here and gives you his version of how to cover a 5-7 split. He has really been shooting with a great deal of accuracy. A great deal. Practically all the accuracy you'd ever want. Can't be on three. Oh! What a mixer! Wow! Lou Campy, who is on his way to that 2-23. If he can strike three more times, here now is Junie McMahon, who if he strikes four times in a row, he can roll a 203. Junie is up on alley four. He's going to cross over. Hey! And 
And on the crossover in the Brooklyn side, it is Junie McMahon who gets the strike. That's one of the four that we mentioned necessary for him to make in order to shoot a 203. But from the standpoint of the three games and in total pins, the match is over because Lou Campy has won it. And that, of course, means $500, Campy, leading by 48 pins in the match, 20 in this third and final game. Third and final game is worth 100. Man on three. Hey, Junie has a strike in the 10th frame, giving him two more rolls. Two more rolls. He still has a crack at that 203. Big crack at it. Junie now one of the great champions of modern day bowling. A Hall of Famer on three. And he was up high on the head pin, leaving the six and the ten. Because of his making a strike and a tenth, he is given uh, two balls for the roll and going then for the count. So he has one more shot coming. And if he covers the six and the ten pin, he will have rolled a 191. He gets it. And there is a 191 for Junie McMahon in the third and final game. He's a big favorite wherever uh, he goes. And of course, here in the East, he's a fellow that uh, is really sought after in the way of exhibitions, and of course, rightfully so. Here's Campy now. Campy slid by that pocket. Didn't turn up in, hitting low. So it is Lou Campy who, in his third week here on Championship Bowling, has won the big money in total pins in the three-game match. And now Campy needs nine for a tie and a spare to win. Here he goes. Right, he has the spare. He has the spare in the tenth and final frame. And of course, if he strikes with his next ball, that would give him then a total of 203. Now let's see what uh, Lou Campy will do here. On four. And Lou Campy with a 203 sweeps the three game series, takes home all the money as he wins the three game match here in the East at Paramus, New Jersey. Now we'll be back with the final presentation after we first look and listen to this interesting message. Shh. Listen. The only rattle this father wants in his car is baby. That's why he bought a 56 Ford. There is no other low-priced car sound-conditioned as well as a Ford. Ford's quiet ride is just one of the benefits you get from Ford's quality craftsmanship and the many extra features that go into what we call the inner Ford. In the inner Ford, quiet is built right into the body bolts, and that's no exaggeration either, for they're carefully rubber-insulated for greater quietness and to cushion your ride. And Ford uses 18 of these bolts to integrate the frame and body, as compared to 14 bolts used on Ford's nearest competitor. Then, too, Ford's rear shock absorbers are bolted to the frame, not to the floor pan like many other cars. And there's rubber padding at the axle to insulate the body from road noise. Now, these are just a few of the inner Ford features that make the Ford ride a quiet ride, features you'd expect to find only in high-priced cars. You'll find dozens of others listed in this ad, appearing in the magazine section of your Sunday paper this week, that prove there is no body like a Ford body. Test drive a quiet 56 Ford. You will agree, for your riding comfort, Ford goes first with the things that count most. Old Milwaukee draft beer is so good and light, some people will go to any lengths to get it all.
you've gone to great lengths to bring home draft beer. It is the best kind of beer. But look, Old Milwaukee light draft beer comes in bottles and cans. It's premium brewed by the Schlitz Brewing Company. A process has been discovered to put this light draft beer in bottles and cans. So now, every bottle or can of Old Milwaukee beer is genuine draft beer. Have one, have another. Old Milwaukee is the light draft beer. Once there was a fellow who deliberately <coughs> drove into a fish market. Why do you hate fish? asked the psychiatrist. Because every car I buy turns into a whale, the man spouted. They're so big and clumsy, they flounder all over the road. They're full of flukes, like being too big to park in garage. They have an appetite for gas like a Moby Dick. Why not get a small imported car, asked the psychiatrist. I have a big family, blubbered the man. We'd be packed in like sardines. What you need, said the psychiatrist, is a long, restful trip in a Rambler. Rambler is the only car with both the room and comfort of a big car, plus European car economy and handling ease. Rambler also has the smartest style, lowest cost, highest resale value. So, if you have a whale of a gas guzzler, go fun test a Rambler, 6 or V8, at Hudson Dealers, at Nash Dealers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, how about looking at those final scores once again as Lou Campy of Dumont, New Jersey, rolling a 6-11, defeated Junie McMahon of Fairlawn, New Jersey, who shot a 571. And on any program, on any bowling alley, it's always great to have a Hall of Fame bowler, and that is the case here this week on the show. So coming out to get his share of the money in the show is Junie McMahon. Junie? Often it's sometimes better to go fishing, huh? Uh, like uh, who said Mike Jacobs say I should have stood in bed? Huh? You should have stood in bed. Well, uh, there have been uh, many, many days and nights that uh, you have really shot some fantastic scores, Junie, and uh, uh, we'll remember those and forget these and uh, the Don't two hundred dollars. <laughs> we won't forget that. And, and Junie, it was wonderful having you on. Fine, Chris. I enjoyed it very much. Fine. Outside of a few frames. <laughs> That's right. Open frames. <laughs> Junie McMahon, ladies and gentlemen. Now, a fellow in uh, three weeks has made himself a considerable amount of money. He is also a fellow from New Jersey. Here he is, Lou Campy. Lou? Hi, Chris. Well, uh, in addition to making all this money, you've uh, kept a lot of friends and made a lot of new ones, perhaps. Yes, I didn't shoot too... Uh, real big scores, well, but I mean, that was just enough to win, so you know, it wasn't uh, too bad. Lou, I think probably what I'm going to give you now will make those three children smile, also Mrs. Campy, because here is $100 for winning that third and final game. Here is 500 for winning the three-game match. And in uh, nine games, three weeks on this show, you have won eight of nine. Wow, that's some shooting. Continue it, will well, you? I'm pretty lucky. You know, Lou right? Campy, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> did a wonderful job. All right, all right. Thank you. Certainly. Lou Campy and Junie McMahon. And now uh, on Championship Bowling, this is Chris Shankle saying thanks and so long. <laughs>